Ladies and gentlemen, always a great time when we check in with the man who has fearless media commentary on his Substack blog, Press Run. Dot media. If you haven't checked it out, you must. You'll never be able to look at the mainstream media the same way again, and that's a good thing. Eric Bowler is back with us on Make It Plain. Eric, how are you, buddy? Hey, thanks for having me. I'm good. It, it, yeah, and it's, I'm glad you're good. Always good to talk to you. I, I want to go. We haven't uh, uh, talked a little bit about so I want to just go back a, a little bit and work up to some sure. things that, that are current. We, you know, we had alluded to or really forecast over time, we talked about how the media is trying to manufacture stories, gossip, drama, soap opera about Biden's administration, about his shortcomings just didn't seem to work. But now it seems that they've gone in the direction of the vice president. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's, but let me just ask you this. Is Politico trying to be a, a gossip column? I mean, because that's what it, it looks like. Yeah, I mean, it, that drives a lot of it. Politico is very frustrating because they obviously have an enormous staff. They have an incredible, incredible amount of resources. Politico is probably the largest newsroom in, in Washington, D.C. So they could be doing good things and they occasionally do. But yeah, I mean, it's clearly, a you know, clickbait has a lot to do with it. Gossip has a lot to do with it. They view every morning through the filter of the GOP. What, you know, what are Republicans angry about? What's what's the spin? Um, and they were the one that kicked off this the latest round of, you know, Kamala Harris coverage. You know, she's a bad boss or her office is unhealthy. Uh, people are uh, overworked and, you know, underpaid and things like that. It's an interesting story if you want to take a look at how political offices are, are run in Washington, D.C. But as I pointed out in my piece, the, the last three examples I can think of, um, they're all women. <laughs> apparently right, right. men don't apparently men don't run political offices in Washington DC they don't run consultancies they don't run think tanks only women and only women do it badly only women you know and and the Kamala Harris piece and we saw with uh, Amy Klobuchar when she ran for um president really the only in-depth coverage was how she treat how does she treat her staff that was the name mm-hmm. of the very long New York Times piece how Amy Klobuchar treats her staff and I pointed out, I've never seen, I, you know, I've been watching this a long time. I've never seen a, how does Ted Cruz treat his staff? How did John Edwards treat his staff? How does Marco Rubio treat his staff? Mm-hmm. Un, literally of no concern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and when we do, um, you know, and, and when there is passing reference to how men run offices or how men treat their staff, being loud and angry and overbearing is, is usually a, a good thing. That's that's right. the sign of a, a serious player. That's someone who right. wants to get things done. That's someone who doesn't have patience for a mediocrity. Uh, that's someone with their you know their eyes on the prize. So there's this really obvious uh, sexist double standard. And Kamala Harris was uh, you know the political ran the piece, and then you know it was a slow news week, so everybody mm-hmm. did a follow up. Right, I right. Pointed out in my piece by the end of the week, CNN they they did their they weighed in. And the way they framed it was very interesting. White House goes into damage control over reports of Harris office dysfunction. So it was about optics. White House is in damage control over something that is alleged, you know, um, a, a alleged dysfunction in, in Harris's office. So, you know, you could read that article five times and not really understand what the, what the point of it was, but the point of it was, Hey, let's put the first person of color, the first woman vice president ever, let's put her in a microscope that no other vice presidential office has ever been put under. And let's really scrutinize it, you know? And my last point real quick, you know, the only times of the only time, you know, how someone runs an office has come into question is, are there, you know, are there allegations of abuse, of harassment, you know, of, of discrimination, of course, none of that had to do with with Harris. It was all it was kind of dog bites man uh, type of reporting about how people couldn't get meetings or, you know, her staff was insular and, and things like that. Yeah, completely yeah. pedestrian events. And it was blown up as a week worth of never negative coverage for, you, you know, an historic vice president. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and you're right. right. And never before 
that coverage of any vice president's office. No. Not in that way. It was, it was just really, and and I mean, obviously, it's it's almost as if, uh, I mean, we can go back and see a pattern, especially with Kamala Harris, because remember, the media, I think it was political even, that first reported on the alleged statement by Christopher Dodd in the vice presidential search. That's uh, right. She was too ambitious. Right, right. And that now she's too dysfunctional. Right, right, um, right. And, you know, I wrote a separate column a couple of weeks before. Well, you know, when she went on her first foreign trip. And, right, and, right. And, That's uh, right. The entire trip had been overshadowed by a 30 second back and forth she had with Lester Holt about visiting the border, which is a Republican talking point. Right, so, right, right. Uh, right. And, and in terms of her role in, in the, the vaccination rollout, which has been a massive success, she was a key spokesperson in that. She traveled all over the country in terms of vaccination. Uh, that, that just gets kind of flushed down the memory hole. Uh, yeah. and, and the press focuses on, oh, she hasn't stopped the border surge. Well, that was never her job <laughs> to stop the border surge. It was to be a diplomatic liaison with Central American countries and try to convince people uh, or try to help their economies and, and things like that. So people didn't want to come to the Ameri uh, United States so badly. So she's obviously been un put under the microscope the way, you know, uh, someone, a uh, Mike Pence or uh, was never, ever put under a microscope. Uh, the only coverage Mike Pence ever got was how is his relationship with Donald Trump? That's right. Kamala Harris, there hasn't right. been two sentences in six, in six months that suggest she doesn't have a great relationship with Joe Biden. So it, it's a completely different standard they're using to cover the first woman and in, in, in the first black and the first Asian to be vice president. And also, instead of the coverage being, because I thought the story should have been that Biden was giving her a portfolio right. Right. that was really quite significant for a vice president. I can't remember Absolutely. one having one that significant. But instead of that story, oh, she's dysfunctional. There's a problem. She won't go to the border. I right. think we the last time we did talk, we did mention Lester Hope. And again, folks, how the mainstream, you all have heard Eric and I talk about this ad nauseum, how they will take the run with the Republican talking points, not Democratic talking points, but Republican talking points for any number of reasons, inclusive of clickbait, trying to appeal to that audience. And that should not be the standard um, either. I, I want to say just a, just yeah. a quick point, and 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 it, and it dovetails in with the Republican talking points and and her portfolio, right? So you would think if this historic vice president comes in, is given extremely high profile uh, assignments, as it were, you know, BLE BLE liaison for uh, immigration, uh, be the important pe person for the Democratic pushback against voter suppression bills, uh, things like that. Uh, instead of the press looking at that and saying, wow, Biden has a lot of confidence in her. Wow. Uh, Harris is trying to transform this office and turn it into something other than symbolic, uh, rather than giving her credit for taking on and being assigned these very weighty, uh, issues. What was the coverage? Oh, well, she's going to fail. Oh, Biden's setting her up for failure. Oh, this is a bad thing. She can't fix the border. So this is, this is an anchor around her neck. If she runs you know, in, in 2024, 2028. So to me, that was, in, that was really telling that you take what should have been uh, a, a sign of respect and, and ambition uh, and, and wanting to take on important topics. And the press looked at that and said, oh, this is bad news for her. This, right. You know, this, this is this. So right, right. If, well, if, if, if folks, if folks need uh, uh, proof that there's a double standard, that's a nice little, uh, that's a nice little example. Well, well, also, Eric, since you mentioned it, um, it, it seems to be also foretelling of what 2024 is going to be like or 2028 or whenever. Oh, yeah. They, they're already trying to put up a firewall, whereas she is a failure before right. she even starts. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but conversely, you know, you've got media reporting on Ron DeSantis and others. Um, with little or no scrutiny. And he's got a track record of, 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 as governor, voter suppression and everything else. Um, and again, there is this double standard when it comes to women, folks. And, and particularly I Particularly Democratic women. Yep. Yeah, particularly Democratic women. So um, this is going to be very interesting. Let's stay in the, in the category of women, um, as you and I, as we are, Eric and I are feminist men, so mm -hmm. to speak. Uh, Nicole Hannah-Jones, 
mm. uh, and what happened at the uh, University of North Carolina. I mean, we know a lot of that had to do with race and critical race right. theory, but it probably had something to do with her being a woman as well. Oh, sure. You reported on something that has not really been reported on much. And there was an anti-Clinton donor that was right in the middle of this, uh, yeah. uh, Walter Hussman, correct? Yeah. He has his name on the um, University of North Carolina School of Jur Journalism building because he, uh, in 2019, pledged to give $25 million. Most of that money hasn't arrived. That's not unusual. These gifts are often over a long period of time. But when you um, when you give $25 million, you get your name on the building. And if you're a white man, uh, you get lots of extra privilege. And one of his privileges was he thought he, he had a say in faculty hiring. So when he heard about, you know, the University of North Carolina and what would have been a stunning coup uh, had had offered a job and and had been accepted by Nicole Hannah Jones, uh, he decided to go to work. He decided that it wasn't for UNC. You know, she was an advocate. Uh, people were going to you know, she was going to discredit the university in some way. Uh, so he was sending emails to chancellors and deans. Donors aren't supposed to a weigh in on faculty hirings. They're not even supposed to know who's being hired. You know, the School of Journalism uh, offered her a job. The, the entire faculty voted, thought she should get tenure. Every tenure uh, vote goes to the board of trustees, and they sat on it because of this um, of this donor. So yeah, what I pointed out is that a lot of people hadn't realized is that he was in. You know, he'd been publishing an anti-Clinton newspaper in Arkansas for, for 30 years, Arkansas uh, Democrat Gazette. And the newspaper, it, Bill Clinton once said uh, that newspaper had been tormenting him for decades. Mm -hmm. When this controversy erupted, a former uh, newspaper reporter who worked for, uh, worked for him went on Twitter and said, this guy is, bad, you know, bad news. You know, he was, he was part of the whole fake media movement way before Trump. He's a Trump supporter. So, A, you got to look at that and say, why is an anti-Clinton hater uh, have his name on the University of North Carolina journalism, journalism building? <laughs> and, you know, it's just another example of, the, of this movement to delegitimize Democrats, whether it was the Clintons and now Hannah Jones. I, I thought it was really telling that this Clinton hating donor managed to wreck University of North Carolina's reputation the way he did. The faculty is, was furious. The, the School of Journalism was furious. They were humiliated. Oh, so, and, and if folks don't know the, the way the story ended, uh, this last week, Hannah Jones said, oh, you know, thanks for the offer. I'm going to go to Howard University. And I'm going to continue. Every, other per, every other person who had been in this position that Hannah Jones was offered at University of North Carolina was given tenure. And she was not, she was, they stitched together this five-year package as one of the professors at the school said, she's probably the most prominent journalist in America today, possibly in the world. And UNC is, is kind of giving her a hard time about her, her credentials, Pulitzer Prize winner, MacArthur genius. The whole thing was embarrassing. And it was all fueled by an anti-Clinton donor who, who spent years tormenting them with his newspaper and should not have his name on the University of North Carolina Journalism School. And he should not be weighing in uh, on who's getting hired. And, 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 you know, and, and Hannah Jones, this was kind of the ultimate check, checkmate move. Um, and, and the university came out looking really bad and all of that. More MIP after this message. So the paper, the Arkansas Democrat, which Hussman bought, this was the tweet that you're referring to, Douglas Blackman, a yeah. Pulitzer Prize winning journalist who once worked for the, the paper. Um, quote, Hussman's family bought the dying Arkansas Democrat in the 70s and installed him as boy publisher still in his 20s. He hired extremist conservative editors who made war on the truth and in the 80s began spinning bogus whitewater conspiracy tales about Bill and Hillary Clinton. He's been a mini Rupert Murdoch for 40 years. Walter Hussman is a founding father of the fake news slash Trump lies era era. And you also wrote that it was in that newspaper, the editorial page first uh, came up with the name Slick Willie. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So this is who you and see. And, and see what, so let me just add to your story if I could. For Nicole Hannah Jones, I mean, it's really a blessing in disguise because as you probably wear in an audience, there is a lot of movement and discussion around people with great talents going back 
yeah. and giving their resources and talents to HBCUs in the first place. Right. Especially in athletics. You know, LeBron James' son might go to HBCU. That's been unheard of for years. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So, and, and so, you know, I counted all joy that she and now ta Hasi Coates is going to follow her yeah, right. yep. uh, from the Atlantic. Uh, for those of you don't, who don't recall, uh, the School of Journalism at Howard uh, is the Bill Very building in which I, my mother gave birth to me when it was Freedman's Hospital. That's what the school, that's what that building is now. Um, but, but you know, what it, what it also shows, the other, the other question I should say it raises is that there are African-American students and faculty at the University of North Carolina. North mm-hmm. Carolina's greatest athlete is Michael Jordan. Right, right. So, so at a point, folks, we have to ask ourselves when we send our kids to these schools, especially as a student athletes, to make money for these schools. That's why the NCAA debate is so important about people being able to make money off their own likeness as student athletes. I mean, if I'm a parent and my kid is getting ready to go play major college basketball in Chapel Hill, I might think twice as a black parent now. Yeah. You know, because because they're not just going to play basketball, they're going to go to school. And you're saying that someone is qualified as Nicole Hannah Jones is denied tenure yeah. because of her, her 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 theories, her color of her skin, her gender. Right. It's completely is completely unacceptable. And, I, and and this ought to be a wake up call to us all. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad, frankly, that she is going um, so that she did turn them down and say, no, I'm going to an HBCU. That is much more important, much more important. Yeah, um, and, and, and and there was reports about you know black professors on that campus. Some a, one of a uh, history professor was quoted as saying ninety percent of them are, are definitely looking at their options because yeah. you start to wonder what what who's next and 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 what am I doing here? Uh, and so you know, <laughs> right, right. That, that, and, no, you're absolutely right. It, it, it all goes back to this 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 web of conservative right wing money and people. You know, it's it's not always easy to understand how powerful and, and, and how far that influence stretches. And so this is a really good example of that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Tucker Carlson. <laughs> uh, but this is probably for, for ratings and clickbait yeah. um, too. So he, he thinks the NSA is spying on him. Is that what, what he thinks? That's his claim. That's his claim. So he uh, a couple of weeks ago, he said, oh, you know, NSA is, cl- is spying on me. Uh, they're leaking my emails to journalists. And, and uh, one of them even called me and talked about it. He said, you know, he, 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 he clearly read j- emails I had sent because no one else knew about the contents, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, it, this didn't, it was a very strange allegation. The NSA in a very rare statement. Oh, and he claimed it was all being done to get a show canceled. Uh, and then the NSA, in a very rare statement, said, no, we're not spying on Tucker Carlson. We don't really care about his show. <laughs> then late last week, it was reported, oh, Tucker Carlson w- was trying to land a Putin interview. And rather than go through the State Department and traditional channels of communication the way journalists do, he decided to start emailing some, you know, likely shady characters in Putin's circle. Well, guess what? Those those folks are all monitored by the NSA. Right. And- most likely scenario is his his communications were monitored as well, and the likely scenario is they knew he, they they're being monitored, and they didn't tell him they were being monitored, and then he found out and he freaked out, and because we don't know what he said in his communications, and then possibly in a way to get in front of this story, he ran out and said, "Oh, I'm I'm being spied on, I'm being spied on," but then then he said. Well, I, you know, I know the journalist who, who, who the NSA directly leaked the emails to. OK, well, who are those journalists? Well, he won't say. OK, well, as this controversy spreads, how come none of the journalists who, who supposedly had his emails leaked by the NSA? How come no one's writing about it? How come no one's come forward and say, oh, yeah, I, I can confirm he's got, you know, <laughs> this is all this is such a moronic story. And it's. So uh, pat, pat, patently transparent he, that there's nothing there. And the real tell, the real giveaway is Fox News itself won't touch this story. Right, Fox right. News, if, if the NSA were spying on a Fox News journalist, they would ha- they would be running sp- three hour specials every night uh, because this would be gold ratings, gold. It would be everything Fox News hates in terms of. Uh, um, in, in, in terms of, um, you know, big government and things like that. 
Um, so, but they haven't touched it. And, and I think Tucker's furious about that. If the NSA actually were, uh, uh, you know, spying on Tucker Carlson or anyone at Fox News, they, this, that would be, oh my God, that'd be the story of the decade for Fox News. Right. Uh, they, they would be broadcasting it nonstop. They would be condemning the Biden administration. Republicans would be demanding hearings and, and legislation. But Fox News itself won't touch the story. And there was a report on CNN today that, that Carlson is very upset that Fox News won't touch this story because it makes them look like a fool. Um, and 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 that's the big tell. So this story is just it's just ridiculous. And anyone who takes it seriously, the problem is, you know, if you have Fox News is top rated host and he makes an allegation, a lot of the Beltway press will report on it. Right. You know, and, and and by reporting on it that the way they do, it lends an error to, uh, to legitimacy. Most of the coverage has not pointed out that Carlson could easily confirm all of this in 10 seconds and he refuses to do so. Uh, and, and most of the coverage just ignores the fact the whole thing is, you know, it, it, it doesn't hold up. But, you know, th- this is this is part of the anti-government. You know, he wants to insert himself and he has, you know, successfully. But again, um, there's there's no there there. And, and the fact that Fox News won't touch this really you know, tells you all you need to know. Well, not only that, you you lay out the chronology of events, Eric, and this started in the spring, yet his producer, this is telling as well, Tucker's producer filed a freedom of information request in which he demanded, quote, any calls, records, texts, or emails the NSA has obtained from journalist Tucker Carlson's cell phone or email going back to January of 2019. Hmm. That's two years ago. Right. So what are you really saying there? What what I mean, are you accusing them of surveilling him going back to 2019? And what would they have surveilled him for right. back in 2019? So that in and of itself is <laughs> is revealing. And yeah, because, right. Because, again, his story is, well, I just reached out to these Russian, op, you know, uh, intermediaries, as he called them, U.S. based Russian intermediaries in the spring because I wanted to get an interview. And, and then he goes to the government. Well, I think you've been spying on me since 2019. Well, OK, how long have you been talking to these Russian intermediaries uh, if, if it's only been uh, since 2019? Oh, and the other ridiculous, just this massive hole in the story. You know, this was last week. He says, oh, you know, I, I was ta-, so he confirms the story. I was talking to these Russian intermediaries. I was trying to get it. You know, I was trying to get an interview and the Biden administration found out and they read my emails and they leaked them because they want me to they want to ruin my career by saying, look, Tucker Carlson's trying to get a Putin interview. He's he's a traitor. He's anti-American. As I point out, you know, Chris Wallace got a Putin interview. Megyn Kelly got a Putin interview. Nobody cared. Nobody thinks if you're a journalist trying to get a Putin interview, you're anti-American. So that was the entire premise for his claim that he was being spied on because the Biden administration wanted to get him canceled by showing he wanted a Putin interview. Nobody cares. Everyone gets Putin interviews. It's not a thing. It's, so it's just his logic, of course, is idiocy. But, you know, Fox viewers don't care about that. They'll they'll buy whatever he's selling, I'm sure. Well, and they don't really have a choice because there's nothing else on during that time. <laughs> More MIP after this message. I'll be honest with you. See, when you put people in that situation and that's all you give them to look at see those people yeah. just leave fox on you oh know they God. just leave it on they're not going to turn yeah. it off so right. some of those people are just interchangeable as long as they're kind of towing that same line but if they came up with another tucker carlson or somebody that that ilk it wouldn't be like there would be protests in manhattan bring back tucker carlson um, it's <laughs> right you know it, it's they're all they're, it's all the same they're, they're, um, they're replaceable yeah right 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 uh uh and um so, you know, for him to try to, uh, you call it his, his martyrdom complex, obviously it is. Oh, nice. um, yeah, but I mean, people aren't going to, nobody, and I, like you said, I don't think anybody would care if he got a Putin interview. Um, I don't even know that Fox, Fox viewers would watch it because they watch everything on Fox. Yeah, right. I doubt, I doubt there's a social media movement. We got to get Putin on Tucker Carlson's show. Who cares? Who I mean, cares? <laughs> right, it's, it's totally. Is, is totally irrelevant. So, but, folks, yeah, but Rand Paul today sent a letter to the NSA demanding they look, you know, they look into it. But so it's interesting. Republicans 
are on board with this story and Fox News is still not touching it. It's it's kind of amazing. Uh, and, 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 and it's really curious, uh, um, the, the maneuvers Fox management is making. Look, this came after, you know, these allegations about the voting machines and all these right wing networks got their hands slapped. Trump gave a speech yesterday. He started talking about voting machines and fo the Fox on the screen immediately put up a two sentence disclaimer, basically saying all these companies deny this because they don't want to be sued again. Uh, I don't think the NSA would sue Fox News, but they are being extremely cautious about this uh, in a way the Republican Party is not. McCarthy, Rand Paul, all these morons, uh, they're jumping around like this is like this is an actual story. But the Fox News is just looking at this and said, Tucker, we're not touching it. We're not interested. We don't think it's real. And that tells you a lot. <laughs> yeah, 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 it, 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 it does. Yeah, this is it's crazy. And. I don't think anybody would really want to be on the NSA's radar, but if you start attacking the NSA, then you probably are on their radar. <laughs> you know, I mean, you kind of invite them now. Well, we, yeah, we, right, we, right. we might as well just press this button and take a little look here and see what you're doing. Uh, and then you're inviting us to go back to 2019. Yeah, right, right, right. You know, why would so, as I mean saying, I, I'm worried about the NSA. I want you to send me everything you have on me going back to 1985. Why would I volunteer that? Leave yeah, me right. Um, but that's Tucker, y'all. That's what he does. Okay. And last but not least, the next big lie, the insurrection never happened. You and I talked about this months ago. Yeah. This Vladimir Putin strategy called the fog of unknowability, um, where you just confuse people with propaganda and make things up and you just, you know, um, Trump's doing that again. I think he spoke at CPAC the other night, too. Yep. So, again, it's all about promoting lies um, to an audience that right. is unfortunately still, it's really sad. I mean, it's sad that the, their audience doesn't see their leaders as insulting their own intelligence. <laughs> you have to, wow, you have to say, wait a minute, do, these people, they're really saying I'm stupid because they keep saying this. But the audience, we don't, I mean, we really don't know how big it is anymore, but um, we know it's there. They can just say these things and it becomes believable. Yeah. Today. And, and it's, you know, it's, be, you know, this is beyond misinformation and disinformation. I mean, this is kind of brainwashing at this point. There's no right. topic too big for them to tackle in terms of erasing and gaslighting. Um, I mean, the insurrection was one of the most videotaped current events of our life uh, and and thousands, the, the participants <laughs> videotaped it and they posted thousands of clips on the internet. New York Times last week put together an amazing 40 minute documentary, uh, minute by minute chronology of, of the insurrection that's based almost entirely on, video, on social media videos that people themselves posted. So, you know, you, you look at that and you think, well, how how would they try to erase something that everyone has seen every day the, you know the department of justice is releasing new police video cams in terms of court proceedings it's just savagery just the carnage he, you know, the one the other day the guy they were they were dragging a cop they out dragging. they they wanted to beat him to death there's no question they wanted to beat him to death um and and you know trump said it was a love fest tucker carlson you know last week says you know grandparents marching around with signs so yeah this is not this is this is this really is kind of Kremlin style propaganda and brainwashing. Uh, and, and, and as I point out in my piece, we, you know, we don't have the language to describe this kind of behavior for mainstream American politics, right? This is just the fever pursuit of some cultish, we don't even know what. And, mm -hmm. and, and obviously the problem politically is Trump wants to run in 24 and this insurrection is going to be a problem. Uh, and so rather than apologize, rather than try to ignore it, as I pointed out in my piece, you know, Republicans and Fox News from between January and July have gone from downplaying the insurrection, denying any involvement. Oh, Trump didn't incite anybody to now denying it existed. Uh, so they are aggressively moving in. And as you point out, you know, obviously most people aren't going to believe it. Most people saw it. But it, it really is to kick up dirt, kick up confusion, have a rhetorical response. And the rhetorical response is, 
as Ron, you know, Ron Johnson, you know, Senator, United States Senator, as he said, you know, it's, it was peaceful protest. Um, so this is the this is the pattern. This is the playbook. It's been the Trump playbook for five years. It's straight out of Kremlin propaganda. Kremlin sees this and loves this. This is a, uh, uh, this right. is couldn't be happier. Krem, what what does the Kremlin see Trump doing and Fox News doing? Don't take the vaccine. <laughs> the vaccine is going to kill you. There was no insurrection. On and on it goes. And um, as I've said before, we've we've never seen anything like this in American politics. The press doesn't really have the right tools and language to describe what the Republican Party is doing and, and has become. Beltway Press wants to treat the Republican Party as this center-right mainstream entity. And th- that's what they've done for 50 years. And that's their comfort zone. So that's why they refuse to call Trump a liar for four years. Well, we, the, you know, oh, we shouldn't really pick sides and something like this. Meanwhile, you know, the Washington Post documents 20,000 lies. But the Washington Post newsroom isn't allowed to call him a liar. So, you know, this this is uh, the the Republicans and particularly Trump know they can just overwhelm the Beltway press. They they know they can overwhelm traditional media norms uh, and they know that the press doesn't have a strategy for how to deal with an anti-democratic, fascist, authoritarian political party in the United States because there's never been one before. And you just said something to her, and I, to put it another way, I hadn't thought about this before. We, you and I talk about the mainstream media, and I guess one of its functions is to make the bizarre, the insurrection, as mainstream. You're right. They're treating this party as if it's mainstream. So they're trying to, again, normalize right. um, um, what is um, taking place. And I'd like to think that, you know, when 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 Black Lives Matter videos show police violating African-Americans. They're those who said, that's not really what's going on. They tried to spin it another way. Right. People who do support law enforcement ought to see this for what it is. We see what's happening and someone's yeah. trying to spin it another way. I, you know, our eyes and the Republicans voted. U.S. Yeah. Capitol Police still don't have what they need to have. Yep. So they, they're against defund the police everywhere else, but they voted to defund the Capitol Police uh, yep. to keep them from having the um, uh, protections that 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 they need to have. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know how in, in terms of all of America, the lie sustains itself and he's able to, to run on that. I just it's, it's just it's vivid. I mean, yeah. you, you are, they're dragging police officers out, beating up police officers. And um and I mean, I, I'll be honest, I'm not somebody in the, in, the, in the middle of this Black Lives Matter. I'm not somebody who feels necessarily sorry for police officers every day. But I'm looking at that. Right. I'm like, because first of all, this is what I know. Having been up there, having myself been involved in nonviolent civil disobedience. Yeah. The, the Capitol Police are, they're really yeah. civil servants. Because it's not, that's not a crime fight. No. Out in the street, no. police force they're, every day. They, they literally. Kind of tourist control. Right. Right. And they manage buildings. They yeah. just keep, you know, everything flowing dot eyes and cross T's. Exactly. And I know people up there and I've talked to some of them, uh, even offline, Eric, in my role as a minister, believe it or not. Yeah. And folk are like traumatized. Oh, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you know, that's very different than than going and signing up to be um, a SWAT. Cool. Yeah, yeah, right. Or, or <laughs> somebody on SWAT or DEA. Sure. You know, it's a little bit different. So you don't really plan on getting them going no. to work every morning and folks snatching you up, dragging you out of a building. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> so you kind of feel some empathy. It's like, this, these are human beings. What in the world? And for, for, for what? For nothing. For, for something that wasn't even real. Just something made up ridiculous and silly. Um, yeah, so, but yeah. A, quick, a quick point on that. You please, know, there's this goodwill resolution that came up in the House and 21 Republicans voted against honoring the police who defended yeah. the Capitol because Probably. the resolution included the word insurrectionist. And they said, well, th- there was no insurrection. Mm-hmm. So here we are. Look, you know, it, it, yeah, again, the center centerpieces, if Trump wants to run again, you know, obviously every Democrat in America will just take that police video and, and put it in ads and say, if you want to go back to this, let's go. But I don't think a lot of American, particularly independent voters, want to go back to that. But that that's the reason. If Trump wasn't going to run again, there wouldn't be this incredibly aggressive effort 
uh, to gaslight the whole insurrection and say it didn't exist. Everything the Republican Party and the conservative movement does is because of Trump and protect and try to propel his career. They definitely can't run on back to that hashtag. They use back to blue anymore. Yeah. They can't do that. No, uh, and, and I don't care how many cops out here, Republicans, it, it, it trust folks. A lot of them are giving it a second look now. So wait a minute. This doesn't. This does not compute. Uh, <laughs> so let's be clear. All Star Game. They found what they did. Yeah. Well, they was about to be a mass shooting at the doggone All Star All Star Game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, while the Republican Party is, is going to spend a million dollars running ads against the MLB because they moved their All Star Game. So, you know, I, you know, I, I tweeted, the, you know, last week. Next, you know, the the, the Republican crusade against apple pie. I mean, they're really picking bizarre topics. If someone had come back from a time machine 20 years ago and looked at this, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they'd say, what on earth? Who are who are these Republican villains now? But they all follow Trump. And if Trump hates the baseball, if Trump hates the police, then, then here we are. Folks, that's why we have to be energized and mobilized when it comes to scrutinizing the mainstream media for making this craziness mainstream and normalizing it. That's why we have Eric Bowler to help us do that. If you have not yet, please, ma'am, please, sir, go to yourself to um, enact your third eye. That's that eye right here in the middle of your forehead. Pressrun.media. Check it out and subscribe. Everybody else is, after all. So why don't you? Eric, as always, we thank you, buddy. All right, thanks. Have a great week. All All right, you too, man. Thanks for getting woke and listening to Make It Plain. Please remember to listen, like, and wherever you get your podcasts, please give the show a five-star rating. And please do spread the word. Let's all continue to pray for each other during this pandemic and this police-demic. If all hearts and minds are clear, it has been made plain.